All right. Hello, everybody. ER Wolf here with LFI, and this is our Thursday Roundtable Mastermind. So, so excited to have you here and watching this. We're going to talk, take a topic and talk about All that right. topic. Hello, everybody. And I hope you guys join the conversation. So excited to have you here. I'm going to be letting in people as we go along, but here's the topic. Okay. We're going to get the conversation started. We've said this in the past. Success leaves clues. Okay. Well, you might've heard this before. Success leaves clues. And if you saw the posting, guess what? So does failure. So does failure. So this is what I'm so excited to talk to you guys about because I'm a very analytical person. If, if we're looking at the quadrants of personality types, right? I'm the person who needs all of the data, who wants to crunch all of the numbers, who wants to look at the math behind everything because I truly think that there's a pattern, a process, a formula out there to accomplish anything you're setting your sights on accomplishing. And I know everybody on here has uh, different ventures they're working on, maybe different areas of the life that they're focused on and things like that. It does not matter where your focus is. It matters that you're following the right process and taking the right actions to accomplish that. That's all that matters. That means there's a uniform strategy for success in anything you're working towards. And we talk about this. I know I've mentioned this before, the wheel of life. Um, and this is available to everybody in our um, resources section. If you need help to get access to that, just reach out with a comment and we can get you access to that. But here's how we measure success. I think that's a good baseline to get started is how do you measure success? We take a very holistic approach to success, okay? Success is not success in a single area of your life, but success is when you have a balanced approach to all areas of your life. I'm going to ask you this. Is it worth it to be super successful in business or finance if it completely crushes your health or your family or your uh, friends or your mental state? Again, I, I, I would say I know people, I, I've met people, we all have, who are uber successful, you know what I mean? But maybe they're not the best uh, parent or the best family person or the best uh, what have you. Again, I, I would much rather be a millionaire than a billionaire and uh, have half my time to spend with my family than the other way around where it's 24 seven, 365, all about business. Now that's my approach. Your viewpoint might be a little bit different, but I want you to play along with this concept because for us, success is being a 10 out of 10 in every spoke of the wheel of life. Now your wheel or your spokes, you can adjust or add to. In this case, we're talking about our physical health, right? Our family our mental health, our financial health, our spirituality, our career, and our personal self, and being balanced holistically in that. And what does a 10 out of 10 mean for you? If you were going to be successful in all of those areas and you closed your eyes and you envisioned, what does a 10 out of 10 for your physical health mean? You know, and, and, and that is specific to you. My 10 out of 10 for health is going to be different than your 10 out of 10 for health. So if you're asking me like what I do every day to stay physically active and healthy, that doesn't mean that's exactly what you should be doing. What you need to be doing is looking at the success benchmarks that meet what you want to be and then emulating that path to success. In addition, failure leaves clues. If you see people you don't want to be like, <laughs> you don't do what they're doing. You almost do the opposite right? And we can learn from both areas of that. And that's really the topic I want to talk about today. Uh, I wanted to talk about balanced success, looking at successful people in that success lead leaving clues, and also talk about the converse of that, the failure and, um, and failure leaving clues as well. You know, uh, we've mentioned on past calls, you got to have a to-do list, right? These are the actions you want to take that are going to lead you to success, but you also should have a not to-do list, what are the things that you have to consciously remind yourself not to do? Maybe you're a person who spends a little bit extra time, you know, unwinding and watching TV and, you know, maybe that's how you relax and stuff, but you can't find that extra hour in the day to work on family time or uh, spirituality or mental health. You know, there's this exchange that you can do because we all are 
are, are on a level playing field here. We all have that same 24 hours in the day. However, some of us just use our time a little bit different with the choices that we make. And I'm not saying don't watch TV, guys. I, I like to sit down and watch a movie with the family as much as the next person. I'm just saying we want to create a process and a plan that we can execute on that will take each of us 100% of the way to where we want to go. And here's the reality, right? We've heard this before. You want to shoot for the moon. And in case you miss, you land among the stars. Getting to a 10 out of 10 is the ultimate goal in balance and success on the wheel of life. But if you got to a 9 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10, would that be better than where you are right now? So get yourself a baseline of that. Like if you had a 10 out of 10 and you visualized that, and you thought about what that looks like, you also have to benchmark where am I at right now? Because any journey has two variables, the destination and the starting point. So we want to identify both so we can create the map or the plan to get from one to the other. So guys, that's the conversation I'm throwing it out there. Ruben, I see you've got your hand up first. Um, just a quick little uh, uh, housekeeping here, guys. There are or is a reaction toolbox on the bottom of Zoom. You can hit that reaction to raise your hand like Ruben did. If you want to um, uh, come forward and unmute yourself and talk, uh, you can also throw information into the chat section if you've joined us live on the Zoom. If you're on the YouTube live, feel free to throw that in as comments as well. And I'm going to encourage everybody while we're doing this, take an opportunity to share your digital business card so that we can all network together as a community. We're going to learn from each other here. And if you learn something from somebody and you want to connect with them, please feel free to do that. I've gone ahead and throw my business card down in the chat. You guys are welcome to connect with me, add my card to your card index, clone my card, reach out if you need anything. I've been on calls with some of you already today. Huh, Greg? We had a great time this morning, got some things solved and worked together uh, for help. So Ruben, go ahead, my friend. Thanks for joining the conversation. Yes, I just wanted just to share my thoughts on time management mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Shuffle definitely gives me the freedom to access and connect people, whatever business that they have. I have a business myself. It's called careoarts.biz. Guys, last night I finished this painting. It's called Calla Lilies. I love it. And it's oh, that's absolutely be, beautiful, Ruben. It's going to be uh, probably a, the feature at a art show that we're going to have in September. But by the same token, how long did it take me to do that? That's a five-week project. I had to devote at least two to three hours once a week to focus in on it. And the rest of the time I'm doing what else I'm doing. So whatever we do, if it, if it can be just highlighted in your calendar or whatever, and that's basically what I, uh, ER taught me that concept of using Google Calendar. Now I use it all the time. It goes right in there. And it, and if you keep on doing that, whatever the, whatever you're doing, but the only thing I advise is that, guys, if you have leaves in your gutters, don't clean them out yourself for the ladder. Okay. <laughs> I had some people that did it themselves and they hurt themselves real bad. And then you're way, way back, you know, but anyway, get someone to do it for you. Anyway, thanks a lot. ER. I, I, I love it. There's so much there to unpack uh, Ruben. And I thank you for contributing to the conversation. Um, the, the first thing I want to unpack is what you were talking about with any area that you're focused on. If you carve out just a block, a block of time, okay? And, and I'll be the first to say like time management, guys, I'm not a great time manager. I'm not gonna break down my day in 15 minute increments and know exactly what I'm doing through each minute of the day. Instead, I'm gonna block specific time to, to work on the important items, the priority items in those areas. And so what Ruben was talking about is, hey, two to three hours, two to three hours once a week, I'm going to devote time to my painting, okay? And he has complete control over that. He could say, you know, it's going to be twice a week. It's going to be an hour every day. It doesn't matter. It is his choice because it is his priority and his plan. But the key there, as Ruben said, is you must be relentlessly consistent in following, in following your plan. If he says, I'm going to work on this in uh, three hours once a week, then every week when whatever, that time block hits, maybe it's the same day every week, you know what I mean? Or maybe it's an item that he knows he has to check off at least once as a block per week. Again, there are different strategies behind that. But at the end of the day, 
He realized it needed to be done. He broke it down into a sizable chunk and he was relentlessly consistent about doing it over and over and over again until it yielded the work product that he intended. I've heard this exact same thing through other things. Uh, a good example is writing a book. You've got some options. You can sit down there and just start typing away, you know, um, hopefully write a book in one long stretch. But I've heard from authors, you know, e even when they're hitting that writer's block, they say, if I just block out one hour a day to write, it could be about anything random, just to be writing consistently, just an hour a day. I know I'm going to do it. I expect that I'm going to do it. And it could be writing exercises, short stories, or working on that book consistently over time. The book will reveal itself. Isn't that pretty crazy? Think about it from a um, health and wellness position. And Ruben, I agree with you guys. We also have to know what our limitations are. We cannot do everything that we want to do in our life. Okay. We're going to have to make some trade offs. Additionally, we may not have the skills, the tools, or the physical ability to do some things. That is okay. Guys, that's what businesses do they outsource. They get employees, they find people to help them do things. So to Ruben's point, if you if you see that there is risk in cleaning out the leaves in your gutter and you don't wanna take that risk, or maybe you don't have the skill set or the tools to do that, hire a professional. And again, the same is true for anything else. You know what I mean? If, if you're not a great copywriter and you haven't met Jeff, reach out to him. He probably has some leads or some sources on how you can either learn it yourself or how you can find somebody to outsource that to do it, you know? Uh, so so that, that's, that's a huge thing there as well that I don't want people uh, to miss out on. Um, but, but coming back to this whole thing, again, physical health. Let's say I wanted to lose 50 pounds, okay? I don't know if, if, if that's one of your goals is to lose weight. I know always I've been a person who struggled with weight, weight gain and keeping weight off. So it's always been, you know, I want to lose this much weight or I want to have this body fat percentage. I don't just get on a treadmill and start walking or running or sprinting until I've lost all 50 pounds. I come up with a plan that includes daily activity. You know, it could be lifting, it could be running, it could be swimming and, you know, a healthy, sustainable, long-term eating or meal plan. And if I don't lose all 50 pounds in a week, I don't get discouraged, right? I, I continue to chip away at it until I reach my goal. And I might slide back or uh, accelerate forward, but if I'm relentlessly consistent on it, I'm gonna make it there. And I know on some of these things, and uh, you know, if you have comments, questions, please raise your hand or throw them in the chat. I'm not watching the chat right now, but uh, please let me know. I'm moving over here. You guys know me, I'm a whiteboarder. I am a visual learner and stuff like that. And we've talked about this when it comes to setting our goals and reaching our goals and all of that type of stuff. As a numbers guy, I think about it on a chart. And most of us, we've talked about this. If this is point A, where we're at, and this is point B, some new and improved place we want to go to, and this is time, and this is results, most of us think that the whole process to get from point A to point B is a line, is a linear line. Again, my line's not very straight, but it's a line. But that's not the reality. Again, success leaves clues. If we look at progress for most individuals on doing anything, I don't care if this is focusing on your work and, and getting that next sale and, and scaling your sales and generating more revenue, or if it's losing weight or getting a painting done, the process of going from point A to point B is more of a parabolic curve, okay? It curves. And this area right here, we've talked about it before. This is what James Clear in his Atomic Habits book, and I'm paraphrasing here, probably mistaking the phrase, is the valley of despair, right? We get in there and we're right here along this curve and we think we should be up there. And so we sit here and we look at the gap between where we think we should be and where we are. And we don't realize that this is where we were. We've made this much progress, but we're disappointed that we haven't made that much progress. So 
what we have to realize and what we have to remind ourselves, this is why we talk about doing it daily. This is why we talk about doing it daily is if we remind ourselves daily to encourage ourselves because we're all going to have off days. We're all going to get discouraged. We're all going to have that chaos of life coming at us. But if we are relentlessly consistent over time, again, that valley of despair is going to create a gap starting from the very beginning. And that gap is going to grow to some distance. And then it's going to start closing the gap. And eventually we will get to the point. And here's the reality. Most of our goals that we set for ourselves are things that if we achieved, we, real, we would realize we would realize we can surpass. Most of us will put these glass ceilings on ourselves. I'm going to give you an example. If you're a person who's never made over what, let's say five figures a year, you know, have you set a limitation for yourself at six figures? You know, if you're a person who has made six figures, but never seven figures, again, are you putting a self-imposed limitation? Is there a mental block that, you know, oh, I, I just, I don't think I could ever do that. Guys, Here's the reality. Here's the reality. You have the potential. And I want to I want to put that word out there, the potential to do anything, right? Shelly, I want to have you talk about and uh that book in a second here because I think this is this is awesome, guys, because every one of us has the potential. We're all born with the potential. The potential to be great and do and be whatever we want to be but it's going to require work and effort. And I challenge anybody to identify a single person who they would deem as the success that leaves clues and point out that they did not contribute work and effort to achieve what they've achieved. If that's the case, you might chalk it up as luck and you might as well buy a lottery ticket. So we all have the potential to be great and to win and to do everything we want to do, but we have to put in the work and the effort and the energy. We have to have the right tools, the right skills, and the right plan to get there. And then we have to be relentlessly consistent on executing our plan, even if you do it baby steps. I'm telling you, even if you do it baby steps, you want to run a marathon? Heck, I've met ultra marathoners. These are people who run over 100 miles in one race. And here's the reality. When they got started running, they didn't go out the front door and say, I'm going to run 100 miles today. They said, I'm going to walk around the block or I'm going to go for a jog. And they did it so consistently that the five-mile jog became easy for them. You know, they had set a base. Um, the, the, the 10 miles was consistent. They started running lots of marathons and got addicted to a runner's high. You know, then they wanted to challenge themselves. It, it, it wasn't eat the whole elephant all at once. It was eat the whole elephant one bite at a time, and eventually the elephant's gone. You look up one day, and you're like, wow, that was good. I just finished that elephant. And then you realize, like, there's a lot of other elephants out there, and now I know that I can eat one. I could probably eat every elephant I looked at if I was willing to just do it one bite at a time. But psych, psych, uh, you know, from, from a psychological perspective, we have to show ourselves that we're on the right path. We have to celebrate celebrate the achievements. And here's an achievement you guys should be celebrating right now. You've committed some time right now to contribute to the conversation today, right here. And after this is done, you're going to make another choice to contribute to something else that's going to take you further towards your goal. And that's all you have to do. We don't have to get overwhelmed trying to do all things or be all things, etc. We just have to be focused daily on chipping away towards making that forward progress. So eventually we're gonna hit B and then the sky's the limit. That'll be C, D, E. You ever met an E person and they're like, anybody can get to E and you're sitting here going, I'm just trying to get from A to B, A to B. A lot of the people I meet that are in the E category, they sometimes forget what it, what it was like just to be at point A because it's been so long, they've been doing it so long, they've gotten to the habit, they've done all of those things. So guys, even if you're looking at that person, chart all the way back. You know, if you're into sports, go look at your favorite sports person. You want to look at Michael Jordan or LeBron James or Mike Tyson or whoever, Michael Phelps, doesn't matter. You know, pick somebody and chart that back and you're going to see a lot of amazing things, right? You're going to see them surrounded by mentors, coaches. They're going to do training and practice and all of this other stuff. They don't just show up at the main event and win. 
right? They prepare, they plan to win, they prepare to win, and then they execute on all that. And so they can expect to win. Okay, Shelly, you've been super patient. I truly appreciate it. I know you were uh, sharing a little bit of book there and you had some thoughts. Go yeah. ahead and thank you for joining the conversation today. So first I was thinking about you and Guy yesterday, all day. Oh. Um, <clears throat> this right here, Law of Divine Compensation, if I, I just started reading it just, I don't know, maybe two months ago. I picked it up and I started reading it and got through like several chapters and literally within just reading the several chapters, I landed a $500 job just dropped in my lap because of my energy just changed. You know, just the thought I came from a place of lack. I came from a place where we didn't have a lot of money um, my whole life really. And uh, so I didn't cut, like I went to a billionaire's house and didn't know what to do. I'm like what? And they were just normal people. <laughs> uh, so I think that there's a, uh, there's a lot of things that go through our head around money. And I don't think we realize it until we start the process of writing it down and figuring out our why and, and who we are and where our values come from. Our values are wrapped around money. And unfortunately, if we can't figure out what our values are, we can't usually get past that. So it, first figure out your values, figure out where that money lack or that idea of money comes from in your head. Where did you grow up? Um, did, you, did your parents tell you things that maybe money doesn't grow on trees and right. you know all those things that they tell us or, or maybe they told you their annual amount Yep. You know, I make this. Where do, you, where do you think all this money's coming from? You know, like all those things. And they, they put a lot on a little kid. Yeah. I actually just went through this with a client uh, who has a, a sense of black. And she instantly, once I brought that to her attention, she's like, oh my gosh, that's where that's coming from. Immediately, she got a, she got a house, a listing like the next day. And yep. she was having a hard time getting the listings and things. So I know that there's a block there around money for a lot of us. Um, and I think it comes from just things that we hear and we just put it in our subconscious and pretty soon that's a little tiny thing that just plays and we don't even know how to shut it off it just plays back there so uh, being aware i think is everything it, it is it is it's almost like um i don't know i throw a, a crazy uh example out there the matrix right you can you can you can take the red pill or you can take the blue pill. You know what I mean? And a lot of people out there are in one mind frame and it's the conditioned mind frame from all of their past experiences. And the reality is some of those past experiences are traumatic experiences that are leaving lasting impressions on future progress. Um, I know I've experienced that myself. I mean, guys, look, I'm, I love that we're able to join each other on the web and here's why, right? I, one of a past traumatic experiences for me was a school shooting. We're in the midst of talking about school shootings today over 20 years when I was involved in a, a, a school shooting. And this was something that was so traumatic for me that it impaired my ability to get out and socialize with other people for fear of bigger groups and populations. You know what I mean? Like, think about that. So to be able to be online with a group, there's still this comfort bubble that I have. This is one of the reasons why I got into being in virtual business. Not just because I could do this from anywhere in the world, because there was this bubble of protection around me based on those past experiences. But here's the other thing I had to realize. I had to realize that I cannot let past experiences dictate future progress, that I have to be aware and work on those things. You know, now to get out and go to a networking event, and I rarely do it, but I do it. I'm pretty proud of myself for doing it. You know what I mean? So these are all of those things that I think if we sit down and we look at, we can start analyzing our own selves and start thinking about that because that's going to help you again, identify the A, then identify what your B is and do it limitlessly. Because here's the reality, as I mentioned, B, C, D, E, your limitless view right now is still limited. It seems weird to hear that, but your limited view right now is still, your limitless view right now is still limited. But that's why we want you take, you know, when we talk about sprint planning or goal setting, we're going to be doing the wheel of life review every six months. So June is a review time for this. We, if you started at the beginning of the year, we've been operating this for about six months. Hopefully you've been making forward progress on balancing out your success. But when we review it in six months, you're going to realize the 10 out of 10 that you set maybe gets adjusted. And you're going to realize like it's a moving target all of the time, guys. And as long as we're consistent and we make adjustments in course correct, we don't have to be perfect. We just have to be a better version of ourselves incrementally a little bit every day. 
So I appreciate you sharing that, Shelly. And again, I think we can all work together on that. And I always tell people, don't let those past experiences dictate your future outcomes. Jamar, woo, I love to see you on, brother. It's good to have you. Hey, I love that picture in the background as well. It's good to see you and Ruben are enjoying the art there. Preach it to us, brother. I want to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much, ER. Good morning, everybody. Uh, appreciate all the sharing thus far. Uh, today is one of those mornings where I, I was on my morning walk talking about health. Every morning I walk between six and 12 miles. And while I'm on that walk, I'm listening to personal development. I'm listening to audiobooks and podcasts. And, and then once people actually start waking up, because I usually start walking between uh, 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. So the, even on the East Coast, people are just getting up. Uh, towards, the half, towards the later half of that walk, I'm then making calls to people in the middle of the country and to, and to the West Coast as, as well. So what I do is I, I schedule on my calendar a time that I call pay myself first time. I actually have it listed, invest in myself first time. Uh, that, that, that's a 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. block of time. And the only day that I don't have a schedule is Sunday, because I like to try to give myself like a day of rest, so to speak. But Love I it. still end up doing something physical, whether it just be a light walk, stretching or something. And the science behind that, you know, I started doing this before the pandemic. And it's funny, you kept mentioning 50 pounds, ER. I actually released 55 pounds from my body from November of 2019 until about April of 2020. So right before the pandemic hit, I got my health in order. And the reason why is I was turning 40 and I wanted to be fit, fierce, and focused in my 40s. Because I know that, this, this, that the statistics say that men will make most of their wealth between their 40 and 55 year range. And I'm like, okay, I'm walking into my 40s. I've got all this knowledge, I've got all this experience. I've got to start putting together what I know and mm -hmm. teaching that forward because that's going to be the way forward, right? We're in the information age. Right. And there's a saying, it's what you, there's a saying, what you don't know won't, won't hurt you. Well, that's actually wrong because there's a lot of people who are afraid to get retrained and learn new things. And there's this term that says, hey, everybody should just learn to code. When you make a shuffle card, you're actually coding, but by using drag and drop features. So coding doesn't necessarily mean you, you know how to do the base code. Yep. It means you know how to use software and leverage it in a way that allows you to disseminate information and more importantly, have the follow-up factor. So to me, you know, I've been using Shuffle for almost, I think since 2017. It's, I use it in so many ways, personal, professional, and the ability to see when someone's thinking about you that haven't been thinking about you for months is a powerful thing because when you send someone a text 10 minutes after they've looked at a card you sent them a year ago, <laughs> it rekindles um, a relationship. And I like to think of relationships as like, we all are the center of our own universe, right? Yep. And we have different planets of people around us. Everything you want in your life is gonna be a function of the people you know. So people are either drifting away from you in orbit, they're maintaining a steady orbit, or they're way out in the outer orbit. Yep. Or they're in someone else's orbit, but that person is in your orbit. And so there's a way that you can kind of slingshot velocity to get to the people that you need to get to. So I love Shuffle for that reason. And just the follow-up, the ability to just keep following up. I have, a, I have a little essay that I wrote called The Fruit is in the Follow-Up. <laughs> and it's, it's just about like, you know, sowing seeds and then coming back, to going back. We have to use technology. We have to use automation to help us because there's no way you're going to remember, especially if you got a, a large network, there's no way you're going to remember how to, when to follow up with everyone, unless you write it down or leverage digital technology to do it for you. Yeah. Um, so this is like the greatest time to be, you know, a digital entrepreneur, a digital marketer, um, someone who has this knowledge and information. And so you should feel very empowered that you're in the right place in the right time, especially with this particular business model, because think about it, there's multiple business models and streams of income built into what Shuffle is. There's affiliate marketing, which is a multi-billion dollar marketplace. And you've got a tool that allows people to build their network and do affiliate marketing and do any affiliate marketing for any other program out there. And if you, if you go online and look, people are selling this type of information, these types of masterminds 
for thousands of dollars a month right now. So that's what you actually have your hands on. And so if you think about, you know, bringing people to the party, so to speak, Mm -hmm. you can do it in a number of ways. You can do it in a low ticket way. You can do it in a high ticket way. There's so many ways that you can leverage all of the tech that is at our disposal. And again, like uh, there's a saying I have, automation is to your time, what compound interest is to your money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everybody who knows about compound interest, right? I mean, we're seeing the, the ramifications of that now with inflation and with housing prices rising, right? And then the stock market is doing funny business and cryptos crash. All of these things are happening because of the compound effect of choices and decisions. Once you actually really learn how to compound your activity levels with your network, that's what that chart that ER was showing us, you get to a point where all the opportunities coming your way are compounded and are greater than the sum of if you just did them one by one by one. There's a there's a breakthrough effect that occurs. And so now for me, I'm like, okay, I've hit the six figures mark in affiliate marketing. The next step is seven figures. Mm-hmm. Well, how do I do that? Mm-hmm. For me, you can go wide or you can go deep, mm-hmm. meaning I can take the network I already have and see how I can provide greater service to that network at a higher price point or I can just continue to go wide. I do a little bit of both because I think you always want new people in the funnel. You almost want to build your own little pyramid of there are people that I'm servicing at the lower level for a small amount. And then there are people that I'm giving more and more and more to at a higher amount. So that's all I got, ER. So much amazing stuff from that, Jamar. Uh, I mean, you've got my mind spinning already and all of it is such truth uh, as well. And I want to unpack a a, a few of those things. Um, We're going to start from the back. Uh, and work work to the to the 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 front on some of that stuff. But uh, the, the biggest piece, and I'm going to try and keep it short on here. And if anybody else has thoughts, comments, please raise your hand. Uh, but uh, knowledge is power. Think about this. Knowledge is power. One of the things Jamar you were talking about is look, time is going to happen whether we like it or not. The, the clock is ticking. The world is spinning. 365 days, we'll be back around the sun, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we don't do anything, the world is going to change. But we might not. So if they say you always do what you always done, you always get what you always got. I mean, these are phrases that a lot of us live by. I got all the time in the world type of thing. There's a phrase and then there's reality. Look, we don't all have all the time in the world and you're not always going to get what you always got got if you do what you've always done. And uh, Jamar, to your point, that knowledge, having the knowledge out there, whether you're consuming knowledge, educating yourself, we live in the greatest time to ever exist in my personal opinion. Why? I want to tell you the one thing that I think is the game changer is because we all have access to information. We live in this information age where if you want to, and I thought about this, guys, I have two master's degrees, right? I spent well over six figures on top level education, was saddled with all that student debt originally that they were talking about, thankfully debt free on that end. But I consumed the information. I went out there. Somebody shared the information with me. And here's the reality. Every single thing I learned when I, when I got my diploma or my graduate degree or my focuses, all that type of stuff, I reflected back on that. And I told myself, look, if I wanted to lock myself in the library for six months, I could have read the exact same book, studied the exact same material and got the exact same knowledge for a fraction of the cost. (laughs) <laughs> and it's because of the digital age. We have these vestiges of the educational system that are still around, right? Where everybody had to come to an educational institution to get taught by people who thought they had the right information. Now, guys, we've got access to a world of information. And what I feel uh, amazed about is that that's going to matriculate down to all of the world, right? Right. I mean, I think satellite internet's going to give access to the most remote parts of the world to get access to information. And if you're willing to take that information and learn from it and then apply what you learn, we come back to the application and the activity. Because Jamar, I know you are so smart. You know, I want to uh-huh. praise you for that. And, and, and look, you. you educated yourself for that and then you applied it. And that's the key, guys. There's a difference. We can sit there and absorb. And I'm a voracious learner. I love, I, I love learning how things work. I have to understand it's the mechanical mind of me, how everything works. I love business. I want to know how the business model works. Why did we create our business model as Jamar was talking about? And why do I think it's one of the best business models? Is because I looked at all of the business models out there and I started to pick the pros and the cons of each one 
to create a model that I thought not just for us at corporate, because guys, this is not the ideal model for corporate. I'm going to tell you this right now. Mm -hmm. This is not the- Yeah, you're sharing. You're profit sharing so much. We give out over half the revenue. But guess what? We didn't do it from a corporate perspective. When we developed this, we did it from a you perspective. As an entrepreneur and a business owner, we wanted to make sure that anybody else who wanted to be a business owner and an entrepreneur had a path to follow, that they could create a profitable business with little to no upfront investment, time expenditure. I mean, it's, it's up to them, but the, the, the ground floor is so low that everybody can step onto it. And that's the key there. The other thing I wanted to ask, Jamar, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit, and I'm hoping you'll, you'll give some insight to the community yeah. here. You talked about it. A, a, a few things in your process, your daily process. And, and I'd love to have you speak to a, a few things. One, coming up with your daily process, okay? That what, what I would refer to as our MOOS method of operation. I just like these little acronyms that help me remember. So my daily MOO, right? If it's wake up at 5 a.m., uh, do your meditation or your gratitude or your, your yoga or do your walk, you know, all that stuff, your calls. And, and, and Jamar takes it a step further. He's, he's using the compounding effect by stacking on some of those things. I'm going to make my calls while I walk. Mm -hmm. So I want, to, I want you to talk a little bit to the process and the process creation and the implement of your process and whether you implemented it all at time zero or whether you built on it over time, because I'm thinking back to our graph here. And the other one, I also want to have you specifically speak to, you mentioned I walk, you know, almost a, a marathon every day, which is half, amazing. Half, half marathon, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, half, half marathon. That's right, 12 miles versus 26. Um, on, on that side of it, did you start doing that where you woke up one day and go, I'm going to walk a half a marathon? Or did you say, I'm going to go for a walk? And oh, shit, I did. And pardon my yeah. friend, yeah. five miles. You know, tomorrow, oh, I, I must have messed up. I did six. You know what I mean? Did you build on that over time? So over to you. Uh, thanks, ER. So especially, I'll start with the walking. Yeah. So I had done obviously a lot of research on what's the, the most effective way to get weight loss healthily without the damage to your body, right? Yeah. Running causes your knees to ache, your hips to ache. And I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a retired veteran. I've got injuries already that I've sustained. Yeah. So I started with just a mile yeah. and then I moved up to three miles. And then I moved up to five miles. And then it, what happened was I realized that I was already stacking things on my walk anyway, because I was listening to podcasts, audio books and YouTube. Right. And so I said, well, let me just add, let me just add some extra loops, some extra laps. And then at one point I did eight in a day and I realized that it actually gave me energy. It's kind of weird, you know, you expend energy, but then you, your body adapts and gives you more energy. So I, at another, at another point, I was like, okay, well, I'm doing flat surfaces. Where, how can I increase some of this intensity in the same time frame? And I started walking from my place where I live in, in, in the Miracle Mile near Beverly Hills. So I started walking towards Runyon Canyon so that I could get some uphill movement. So now I can burn more energy in the same amount of time. And so I started just growing it that way. Now, the longest walk that I've ever done is I've actually walked 28 miles in one day. Wow. So I walked a marathon just to see if I could do it, just to challenge myself. And I realized that our capacity is far greater than we ever imagined. And that was very empowering. So I actually have traversed a little over 11,000 miles in the last two years by keeping up with that regimen. And what I will tell you is, yes, I released 55 pounds into the wild, but I saw tremendous leaps and bounds in my business because I had a clarity of focus. Sorry. Now that clarity came from, okay, at first I was just waking up at four. I, I had my alarm set for 444, very specific. That number means something to me. I don't know if anybody has studied numerology, but 444 is be mindful of your thoughts because you become your thoughts. So I, I was waking up at that particular time because I wanted to be very intentional with all of the thoughts that I had throughout that day. They say that uh, on average, human beings can have anywhere between 40 to 60,000 thoughts. Women especially can have that many thoughts. Men have a little less because, you know, we're a little more simple. But I realized that I wanted to slow down my mind 
so that it wasn't just running off into various places. I wanted to be intentional with, with, with my thoughts. Mm-hmm. So I was waking up at that time. And then before long, I realized, you know what? When I write things down, it tends to give me a blueprint to follow. So maybe I need to be intentional with how I spend my time. So I'm going to schedule this on my calendar because this is the most important thing. Health is the foundation of wealth because without health, you could have all the money in the world. I used to work in insurance. There are multimillionaires who decide they they can go without certain types of insurance because they have the capital. But once they lose their health, what do they lose next? Their money in pursuit of a cure. So I was like, this is the most important thing. The base foundation is health. Then from there, I was like, okay, well, what are the activities that I was doing? When I first started the walk, I had, I was running my marketing agency. My biggest client was farmer's insurance. And so I had tasks that I had to do for them, but I still had to also go out and get new clients and get new business just in case something happened with that client, right? You never want to be a stool with one stream of income because if someone kicks that one leg from underneath you, you're, you're, you're falling on your butt, right? So I, I started to build extra legs into that stool. Then the pandemic hit. And within a month of that hitting, my biggest client was like, hey, Jamar, we, we hate to do this. We love you. We, we got we to gotta pause things for now. We're not sure when. And they were on their way to buying. This was an agency that had, this was a, a, a farmer's agency group that had 27 agency owners in there. So they were about to buy a multi-million dollar uh, penthouse apartment to, as the headquarters. And I was there, basically their CMO. And they put a pause on that. And because I had built the habits of foundational work that I did, when that switch happened, it was kind of like maybe a couple, like a day or two of like, oh man, what am I going to, how am I going to pivot? But I realized everyone's locked down. Everyone needs marketing services. This is going to be a piece of cake. And I just redirected that energy to the point where I was having about eight sales calls every single day for almost three months. And so I was able to rebuild very quickly because I had the foundational health practice. I had the information gathering, staying on the cutting edge of what was happening. And then I was constantly reaching out to people and just offering, you know, free 15 minute consultations to go over what their issues were and then just providing a potential solution. And because I had so many in the pipeline, I didn't have commission breath it on any call it was really sincerely to help them and, and like hey if here's a couple of things you can do yourself and maybe we can reconvene in a couple of months when you feel like you want to offload some of that work and so I was really just like here's the blueprint do it if you want to but if you want to go faster I can help you and so therefore it was a very transparent sale that I was able to to do a lot of volume with um and so the so I would Add what I would say is have something for health every day, have something for wealth, meaning, well, how are you paying? How are you saving or paying yourself back for with the activity that you're doing? And then from there, think about how are you growing your activity and your pipeline? What are the relationships that you're warming up? And then where are you making the offers, the invitation to actually help people in exchange for something, right? It doesn't always have to be money. Sometimes it could be in exchange for a a, a referral. For example, I'm a public speaker. I've been keynote speaking for 24 years. I've been doing stand-up for 17 years. So two days ago, I got a lead that came in through one of my marketing for a charity event. And they said, hey, you know, we want someone to do this event. It's a year from now. So I'm like, okay, cool. We have a conversation. And my fee is $3,500 for a three-hour event, right? She came back to me because I really liked you, appreciate the call. Our budget's only $1,500, but would you be willing to exchange some other promotional things in the interim? And in my mind, I'm like, okay, I can guarantee $1,500 on a date a year from now. And I can also probably get three or four or five referrals between now and then for some of my other services. That's an absolute yes. And all of that is about keeping your pipeline full of opportunity so that you're never desperate for any one. But the only way you do that is by putting enough energy out. Now, because I can do a 12 mile walk and spend four hours on myself, like investing in myself, how much energy do you think I can then put into just making, reaching out to new people? Mm -hmm. If I spend the same amount of time 
it's going to create an infinite abundant amount of opportunity more than I can actually handle. So now I'm at the point where, you know, ER was talking about outsourcing. I'm at the point now where I need to bring on some apprentices to help me with what I'm doing because it's time to scale. It's not a, it's not enough for one man show, even though I use the automation, I use a lot of things that make my, my time easier. I need to start bringing other people on. And, and the thing is, is like, I could just reach out to people and charge them a consulting fee to show them what I do, but I'd rather find a few people to just give abundantly to mm-hmm. and, and show them what tools. And then sure, I might make a little bit of money on just the tools that they use, right? Referring them because most of the tools that I use also have affiliate programs, but that's just the wave of the future because it's the most efficient way to grow a business by leveraging the people who already love the product and service and use it and giving them the opportunity to make, you know, 20, 30, 40% on the back end. Um, is where most businesses are going. And if you actually look at some of the wealthiest people like Warren Buffett, for example, I believe he owns three or four companies that work in that kind of direct selling affiliate marketing standpoint. And so there's a reason why he's a billionaire. Yep. Jamar, so much good information as always. And so uh, I so much appreciate that insight. And everybody, if you're looking at Jamar going, oh my gosh, I wish I could be like that achieve like that, do like that. Here's the reality. You can, Mm -hmm. you have the potential to do it. I didn't hear a single thing that Jamar said that anybody else couldn't do if they were willing to put in the work and take the action. That's the reality. And guys, look, I can do it. Right. All of us can. And this is what I said at the very beginning. We all have the potential but you know I wanted what? To sh- I wanted to share my. T- I wanted to share my image. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to share my image from Twitter because you mentioned it about we all have the same twenty four hours. That's literally on my Twitter profile. Yep. It's yep, just about right how there. you how do you manage that time? How do you well, leverage that time? Yep. And guys, look here. Here's something cool as well. And Jamar mentioned this, and this is funny because sometimes in business we see this geometric shape here. You know that I've got up here. And we all go, ooh, the the dreaded triangle or pyramid, <laughs> pyramid um, right? And, and, and maybe that's because of the old, uh, you, you know, uh, network multi-level marketing adages where everybody has uh, somebody or knows somebody or maybe personally has a negative experience in that. But remember what Jamar was just saying? He's now at the point where, in my opinion, Jamar, I'm watching in real time, you segue from some of your streams of income from being self-employed to being the business owner. Yes. You know what I mean? When you're self-employed, you wear every hat in your business, right? You don't own a business, you own a job. But when you become a business owner, you realize that you own a system. The system are the items that Jamar flushed out. That's the process that makes up all of the components that produce the revenue in his business, guys. Hate to get all educational on you on the MBA side of things, but this is how the structure works. And the reality is, is this isn't the diagram for network and multi-level marketing. This is the diagram for all business systems. Hate to tell you, we're going to the military and the military. Oh, yeah. I mean, good. Exactly, Jamar. I mean, there's a reason why the government itself leverages this model. We can all be doing this stuff. Okay, I'm going to separate this out to a few things. I'm going to write up here, right board. Right. Maybe this is stock holders. Okay. maybe this is. Management, maybe this is. The employees, I mean, tell me if this represents any business you've ever seen. (laughs) I don't care if it's Sam Walton and Walmart or if it's Jeff Bezos and Amazon or anything in between. Guys, any business that scales is going to leverage the efforts of other people. It's going to pay those people what they're worth, but not what they produce. And again, that worth is in the eyes of the system and the business model, maybe not in the eyes of the employee, but we're talking from the business perspective. So this is where we change our mind frame and we put our business owners hats on. I always tell people, look, I want to give you an honorary MBA, but in my mind and in my world, it's part of that financial health. It's called a mega bank account. You know what I mean? We all want that for ourselves, but there are certain attributes we need to learn. 
Shelly, you were talking about it. We are all impacted by the way we were raised. I tell people, look, I grew up in a pretty affluent community in Colorado, but I grew up just rich enough to grow up poor around all of my peers. It's really interesting when you get that insight where everybody has all the things that you can't afford. And then you start to see how they operate and what works and all of those dyna dynamic components and how they fit together. And we can learn from that. And then we can take what we learn, that knowledge is power, as we've all heard, and we can apply it. And that's the key component that I keep stressing over and over again. And I will continue to stress on almost every call. It is why one of the four calls, 25% of the time we spend weekly on our calls is about making your plan and executing your plan, guys. You, knowledge is power, but knowledge unused is worthless. You know, you can be the consumer of knowledge and that's great. I mean, there are lots of people who are consuming knowledge. Some of the knowledge is like, reality TV knowledge, you know? Other knowledge is like business knowledge. Again, it could be spiritual knowledge, health knowledge, every area and facet that you wanna improve in, grab the knowledge, right? Eat the meat and spit out the bones, guys. There's gonna be good stuff and bad stuff out there. Success leaves clues, apply it. Take an opportunity to do the reverse of that as well. Failure leaves clues too. Are you surrounding yourself with the people who are dragging you back or criticizing what you're working on or things like that? And maybe they're failing in everything they're working on as well. Don't let that influence what you are personally working on and what your personal choices are going to be. And again, we haven't talked about any singular one track to go down. Every single thing you've heard today can be applied in any facet of life. I really like what Jamar was talking about. Again, I'm going to bring up the wheel of life here. Half of these things are health-related things, right? My physical health, my mental health, my spiritual health, my family dynamic and relationship. Would you sacrifice everything? Maybe you don't have a great family. I've, I love my family. You know what I mean? And in fact, the, the biggest and most important thing is the time freedom. So I have time to spend with the people that I love and the you know, extended family around me. But you've got this family health. You've got your personal health. You know, then you've got the financial health, career and finance. These are all healthful things. And to Jamar's point, if you don't have a base or a foundation to work from, your building is going to crumble. You know, so this is this is what I love so much. But the key to all of this, and I, I've said this before on some of these calls, I had a mentor a billionaire mentor. And he said, you know, ER, it's, it's honestly really easy. He goes, you have to believe that the result is achievable. That's the first step. Mm. Do you have hope? Do you believe that you can get there? Because if you don't have a self-belief, that limiting factor, independent of what you do, will always limit you from getting there. But belief alone doesn't equal results. Okay. Get back on the board here. Belief alone does not equal results. He said belief plus action equals results. The action is the single element. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll stake that claim right now, okay? The action is the single most important element out there. So if you're looking at your equation right now, and we're gonna start to round out this mastermind, if you're looking at your process, if you're developing a method of operation, if you're dreaming and vision casting on where you want to go and, and, and identifying something you believe in and creating a process or a plan to get there, the number one factor in success for almost everything that I know of is the person taking the action and not just doing it one time, guys. Like the great example of that are those people who go on fad diets. They take the action for a limited amount of time. And then afterwards, they don't take the action anymore and they regress back to the starting point. The action is the consistent item that you're going to put into your daily method of operation. You know, And some of these things happen every day. Some of them happen a few times a week. Some of them happen once a week. Some of them happen every two weeks. Some of them happen once a month. You map all of that type of stuff out. Jamar talked about it. We've talked about it. We talk about it on sprint planning, guys. Get yourself a calendar. Ruben talked about it. Block out that stuff right? Four calls a week. We do our sprint planning call. We just did that. We did Tech Tuesday at two. We are rounding out Thursday Mastermind. We got Friday with the founders on Friday, but it doesn't stop there. There are other things we can take action on. So maybe you're doing your work action, time blocking in. When am I going to be working on these things? Success leaves clues. Guys, you want to hear about it and get validation? Jamar talked about doing stuff in the morning. Block out everything. Maybe you're waking up at 4.45 a.m., 
Jamar, I'm sleeping in an extra minute. Sorry, brother. <laughs> right? Maybe you're doing a little bit of meditation. You know what my meditation was? And we're talking about that compounding effect. I throw in my headset. I get on my inversion table. I hang upside down like a bat. My, my son calls me Batman when I'm hanging upside down. And I listen to my meditative stuff and I do my practice. Let my body extend and get ready for the day. Then I do something active directly afterwards, something physical for your health. Guys, we're just checking off daily items on our spokes here. It's not more complex than that. You could be walking and making phone calls or sending emails. Success leaves clues. Okay, then I'm spending some family time. We talk about the three pillars, and I love Jamar's analogy of having a stool. The more legs that you can add to a stool, the more stable it is. You want a one-legged stool or you want a 50-legged stool, guys? Ask yourself that question. So family time, time freedom is my number one freedom, okay? Followed by location freedom. Finally, for me, and again, this is just my mind frame, is financial freedom. But those three freedoms, time freedom, I love that I can wake my kids up. They're right outside to start summer vacation. The moment this call gets off, we're going to the park. You know, time freedom. I went and saw, if you joined me earlier this week, I went and saw my daughter's little play midday at school. You know how nice it is to have her beaming because a parent showed up just to watch her sing a song about the 50 states that she learned in first grade? I mean, I told you it wasn't Hamilton here, but it was worth it for me to show that because, again, I'm having an impact on her thing. These are the past experiences that are going to dictate future results. So family time. Then focused effort. All of these areas are dedicated. I'm not, I'm not doing work during family time. I'm not on my phone during family time. When am I doing that? My work time. And I blocked it out. Again, this is just a sample. It's based off of my sample of what I follow. And again, you want to create your own. I'm ending the day. And when the day is done, yes, I will feel the text message here and there. I'm not going to be completely checked out, but I'll put the phone down. It goes on the charger. And I spend family time again. I mean, I feel blessed. We get to have dinner together as a family every single night. Why? Because I was a latchkey kid and I was lucky if I saw my parents before I went to bed. You know what I mean? So we got to make a change, right, Shelly? Amen to that. It's about making a change. Then I have some development calls. Look, we work internationally. I've got calls I got to do in the evening. So I block some time to take care of some of that when I'm on international hours. Then after the kids get gone down, reading books, going to bed, I got some family time, but it's dedicated to my spouse. You know, sometimes we forget that we got to date the people that we love, even though we've been married for a decade. You know, so uh, make sure you're putting all that stuff. And then at the end of the day, right before bed, what am I doing? It's spiritual. It's gratitude. It's mental. It's preparation. How did I do today? Did I win today? Did I just eat eggs and not want to get out of bed and it was just a crappy day? Doesn't matter. The day is over. It's history now. Tomorrow's going to be a new day. That's why we call it the present, right? It's a gift. So I'll just close out the day, do a quick mental checklist. What is tomorrow going to look like? Ah, okay. I'm going to re repeat waking up family time and going into it. Obviously, I'd have my calendar right here on, and you could see all of the things that I populate within those blocks. That's all it is. It doesn't get more complex than that, but the key to all of it is you have to do it. You have to do it. If you make the plan, execute on your plan. If you make the plan, don't execute, great, you're a great planner. We want you guys to be great executionists. You know, the person who's the gymnast who, who wins the gold medal, they have a plan, they have a routine, they practice it all the time, but they execute it. So in closing, guys, in closing, if you got more comments, if you got more questions, I'm gonna invite you to participate in joining us within the LFI community. You can join LFI Insiders. You can join the LFI affiliate group if you're interested in creating another stream of income in your life and uh, learn how that business model is what I believe to be the ultimate side hustle um, for anybody out there who wants to get involved and create a profitable uh, income stream. We'll be kicking off Friday with the founder tomorrow, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. You're going to want to adjust for your time zone. And then we're going to go into the weekend where I always say will, skill, and refill. I love Jamar's day of rest. I mean, just make sure you're giving yourself ample time to rest. I, I read a book called Peak Performance and a majority of the book is just about rest. Think about that. You know, if you sleep 10% more, you actually do like 20% better. You know what I mean? So 
uh, take care of that, guys. I want you to, to hit Thursday hard and, and, and really get after it today. Look back at what your plan was for the week. Some of us, we need to sprint towards the finish because we were walking at the beginning. But to Jamar's point, even if you just walk, I don't know if anybody was hearing that. Jamar does not run a half marathon every day. I hope he never does. That's a lot of impact on those knees that Jamar was talking about. No desire. <laughs> uh, you can pay me to run. You know, my wife's a runner and I've got to run the Boulder Boulder on Monday and it's check it off the list and get it done. Um, you know, it's that Dave Goggins approach. I'm just not going to give up until it's I cross the finish line type of thing. Uh, but go out there and execute, make your plan. And even walking, chipping away at something will make forward progress. It's going to release 55 pounds. And closely. Energy, Go ahead. Loves, energy loves momentum. Have you ever noticed that when Jamar was talking about, he didn't start out walking 12 miles a day. He started out two, three, five, six, eight, 12. You know, it's a progression and it builds just like that compounding interest. It builds. If you ever look at the growth chart of Warren Buffett's wealth, I know that came up in conversation today. Look at his growth of wealth over time and you're going to see a parabolic curve. It didn't happen all at time zero. It built and compounded over time. And that's based on Shelly's comment of momentum. In closing, if you need to start, if you need to start taking action, I had another mentor, and I, I, I used this example, I think last week. If you're trying to shoot three pointers and you're bricking it and not making a single basket, I want you to walk up underneath the hoop and put it through the basket a few times. Why? Just to acknowledge yourself to yourself that you're capable of putting it in the basket. Once you do that, take a step back, put it in again, take a step back, put it in again, take a step back, put it in again. Eventually, you'll get back to the three-point line and build that momentum back up. So guys, take an opportunity to crush the rest of your Thursday. For everybody who participated on today's call, I love this mastermind call. It's becoming one of my favorites. Um, I, I encourage you, if you learn something here, Go back and watch the replay. This was on YouTube live stream. It's replayed. Jamar, if he wants to cut up his highlight reel, man, go cut it up, block out that time, reshare it out there. If you like what Jamar said, what I said, what Shelly said, what Ruben said, what anybody had to say here, I encourage you, share this out to somebody you think it could help. We want to help a lot of people. That's what this community is all about. How can I prove that to exactly what Jamar was saying? This is the type of stuff that people are paying thousands thousands of dollars to attend, to join in. Guys, that's not our business model. I'm not out there hawking training or hawking sales stuff. Like there are plenty of great ones out there that are, and I'm not going to say that you shouldn't buy that stuff because there's good information out there. But we're in the information age, guys. Most of that stuff is freely available if you want to search for it and spend the time for it. Okay. Most of the people I know who are the marketing gurus, they're marketing the exact same thing that they're going to tell you and they're doing it in the exact same way. So if you just step back and start looking at the overall picture, the patterns will reveal themselves. We started off success leaves clues, and so does failure. So open up your eyes, look around. I want to thank you all for taking an hour of your time to spend with me and the rest of the community. Make sure to participate. We can all support and help each other. And I will see everybody on the next call. Thank you guys so much. Much gratitude for you.